you all have up to that point seven the music and Show Tech was bad. That's the Amherst Gold song. Continuing my Amherst grades, which I started the last segment. Uh, Dotry gets a B. Currently leading the team with a plus 11. That's not by luck. That's for a reason. Dotry will write a trade for Nick Batista to develop to a real potential defenseman in the organization. Good trade for them. Asplund gets a B minus. Only 11 points, 2 goals, and 9 assists. Isn't good enough when you're playing on a line with Olsen and Overhagen. He's technically the second line center of the team, but his, but his fourth line points. Much like Malone and Carnell, he isn't playing bad, but there isn't anything exceptional. He does do a lot of little things correctly and definitely gets the players off the game. Lawrence Pollock is A. Plus. At this point, he's more of an NHL player at that had a brief visit to the AHL. He's played a sloppy first period to start the season. After 20 minutes, he adjusted to the North American game and was completely and instantly dominant player. Not too shabby. The only chance to see him in the playoffs is if the Amherst, is if the Sabres are eliminated. Dalton Smith gets an A minus. The team plays differently when he's behind the bench. There's a hockey cliche of creating time and space, and that's what exactly what he does. Every player recognizes the value he brings. They all know that he has was a back. That he has their back. But it was announced that the team signed him for another season and created doubt. Dalton Smith has proven everyone wrong about that doubt. Brandon Hickey gets a B minus. He's an American Locker League defenseman trending in the right direction. After only 20 games, he's made some mistakes. Brandon Gulag gets a C+. He set the bar high last season and hasn't met those expectations. Leading a rush up of the ice as was common, now is, but now is the exception. Just needs to get his mojo back and plays with more confidence. Chris Gulag gets a bleep B+. A team leader that was missed when he was out with injury. He had immediate impact. Tyler Randall gets a C+. Fourth line forward, he gets taken to the veteran spot with Dalton Smith. Oregon gets a B plus. He's tired for the team leading goal scoring. Um Leonardo gets a B. He turned into a consistent player that's improved in this game over year over, over year. There are still too many invisible games and a first round picks for a first round pick, but as long as he continues to improve, there's only nitpicking when it comes to the way he plays. Another year and a half, he'll be an HL ready. Vielas gets a C. Fourth line four doesn't count as a vet. All kills go over Randall. Justin Bailey is a C plus. To make the NHL, um, he has to become a more reliable Bob Six guy. To help this team, he needs to capitalize on opportunities he creates with his blazing speed. It's a tough balance in that. The game may not be going his way at times, but he continues to take pride in playing for the Amherst. Judd Pierce gets um gets um a vet goes to the Miles Paul didn't play enough games. Overall I'll give him a B plus. They've been in first place since the second week of the season, only fell out of top spots since then, once since then. They've had a five-game winning streak, and along with two other top three-game winning streaks. They have only won three-game lose streak. They have beaten the top teams when it matters. There's been a handful of concern with losses, but those were one-game situations. So, um... I'm not, um... I thought Redmond's been up and down. He's capable of being MVP, but I want more in the second half. However, he's definitely number one. Wilcox should be the whole lot of games. Wedgwood's been decent, but it doesn't seem like he's done anything to be number three goal he should be doing. As for, uh, management um, gets a B because they did get a first place team. I like to be Taylor V. I like Taylor V a little bit more animated, but that's the biggest criticism. And the problem with the Yammers is that they're not getting any better on the coaching. The Sabres had the same problem. So what are your thoughts on the Sayers and Amherst here on Twitter at J-Red Show? On to the NFL. The Patriots um, dominate the Chargers. Everyone was thinking, this is it. This is the end of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick of the dynasty of 20 years. Nope. They go 30, Brady goes 34 to 44. 343 yards. One touchdown. 
and the New England Patriots are back in the AFC Championship game for the eighth time in a row, and um, the 9, 10, 11, 12, 13th time in the Brady-Belichick era. So, now they go to Kansas City. I think there's a struggle in Kansas City because Kansas City has a great defense at home, and New England's been struggling on the road. Um, I I do, I do think Tom Brady has regressed a little bit. I mean, he's still a good court. He, it was still a good year for him, but you can definitely tell he wasn't the same. The Patriots were a perfect nine and zero at Gillette Stadium, but three and five on the road. So. I, can, I don't see New England getting out of um, Kansas City. Um, I think it's going to be Kansas City for the AFC. And for the NFC, it's another, it's another old versus new battle. The, the conference championship is going to be old versus new. It's going to be um, Patrick Mahomes versus Tom Brady and Jared Goff versus Drew Brees. The hot shot young guy, not quite working, but versus the new... The old agent veterans. So and the top four offenses are in the are in the Super Bowl. Um, are in the fucking conference fight championship. So, what are your thoughts on that? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. Um. So, um, Saints versus Rams would be a fun game. Why is there Sean Payton and Marcus? What was? Why is there a beef between Sean Payton and Marcus Pierce? According to Pro Football Focus, Pierce was in coverage seven top of seven of Thomas' receptions and gave 146 yards of the 200 million yards, about half the yards given up by Pierce in the 72 yard game. After the game, Payton was asked about the touchdown. Whether or not he was surprised to see Pierce. Pierce said that that was a plan. Pierce has never been shy about saying what he feels. It's not too surprising that he was going to be a candidate to the game. Um, so, what are your thoughts on Twitter at J-Red Show? It, the Patriots are the underdog this year. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even though they had a great season, they are the underdogs. Um, and is this the story the NFL needs? Um, he, he was named all pro quarterback. Um, the shade is real, but New England is his, listen. The Pro Bowl quarterback wasn't the only Patriot to bathe the worldwide disrespect. Um, there was a 69 straight game, and the Patriots were the favorites. But they're going to be underdogs. Um, it's not that the Patriots are worse than last year, it's the the, the Chiefs are better. New England's defense is seen to come together. Kansas City's D is coming together. 50 50 odds. They did play in, earlier in Gillette Stadium, where New England won 43 40. Belichick is the only one that got through his losing season as the Patriots head coach. No one thinks they would be able to be here today. So who do you want to be in the Super Bowl this year? I feel like it's the opposite of last year. For, for, for the opposite. It seems like everyone it seems like everyone outside of Patriot fans is saying, Ugh, I really don't want to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl again. Go away. Whereas, so, whereas I'm like, hey, I want that villain to root against in the Super Bowl. I think it would be a more interesting dynamic. Um, last year was the opposite. Last year, I did not want to watch the Super Bowl. I'm like, I can't take it anymore. But everyone else in Buffalo, especially, was like, yeah, go Eagles. Okay, last year's Super Bowl was the lowest rated Super Bowl in like 10 years. But it was the highest in Buffalo. Everyone in Buffalo gathered and rooted hard for the... Well, not everyone in Buffalo. There are not, not everyone in Buffalo watching York's a Bills fan. But the Bills fans gather around and rooted hard for the Eagles against the Patriots. But this year, it just seems like the vibe is, no, I don't want to watch the Super Bowl if New England's back in there. Where does Nick Foles go from here? Nick Foles has to be considered the best backup in the in the league at this point. He's shown enough that this role could earn a starting job. In relief of Carson Wentz, Foles got the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Foles pushed the Eagles to 9-7, and, and they lost, barely survived Chicago, but then lost to the Saints. 
Foles didn't have a great game against the Saints, but the most pivotal play in this session of his was with another pass. A pass right through the hands of Alshon Jeffrey. Foles finished that game with 18 of 30 for 201 yards. A touchdown and totally a pair of sessions. Perhaps the, the get game was for his stock a little bit. Foles has done a lot recently. Foles replaced Carson Wentz, who is dealing with a back injury and is expected to be fine after some rest. This, um, he has six touchdowns and three interceptions with three over 70% of his chances. That's an improvement before Wentz made his debut. Foles just threw one, uh, uh, one touchdown, one interception with a 78.9 passing rating. He had another win in the playoffs, this time against the Bears, before falling the Saints. His postseason visit numbers dipped throw. In those two games, he completed 60.6% of his passes for 467 yards, three touchdowns and four interceptions. However, he led the Eagles on a game-winning drive. He did suck at one point. Um, Foles wasn't particularly great in eight of the games for the Eagles. In 2014, he completed just 59.8% of his passes, 2,160 yards, 13 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Clear recession of his regression. Foles, uh, about retirement, Foles stepped away from the game with his role in his future with Andy Reid. Then he came back, he won the Super Bowl MVP. Definitely one of the great stories of football. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if he retires next year. So who do you want to see in the Super Bowl? In the Super Bowl? Uh, one more thing, Kyle Murray's going to the NFL first round. Um, he could go air. Um, there'll be no player more obviously to be in the 2017 than the Heisman Trophy winner Kyle Murray. He's expected to pursue football. If Murray sticks with football, he could change the shape of the first round. Number one, um, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Cardinals controversially hired Cliff Kingsbury, and people quickly provided themselves to be fools thinking he'd be trade to, to trade Josh Rosen to Murray. That's not going to happen. Rosen has definitely, um, I think they should, the, our car, even though Rosen has struggled, they should go with him. He's a rookie. They should, we should see what he does. I think the 4 and I actually pick the other Josh Allen. There are a number of free agents for could pass, including Clark, Clowney, Flowers, Ford, and Lawrence. The top priorities could be Takari one of the top player, those players. But if not hit the market, we're going to have a player who can pressure the quarterback as a T-cap or a DD. Um, so what are your thoughts on the NFL draft? Who's hitting me on Twitter, Jared Show? Um, so, um, number, okay, number three, the Jets. They might want to get Jonah Williams from Alabama. The Jets could toy with the idea of adding a playmaker on defense. But getting Williams is just the smarter move. The franchise is dependent on the development of quarterback Sam Darnold and Adam Gase. Well, next year's going to be the first year New England's going to, isn't going to be the overwhelming favorites to win the division. I think they'll still be favorites, but they won't be overwhelming. It, it could be a three-way race between the Jets, Bills, and Patriots. But, I mean, it depends how much farther does Tom Brady regress, how much progress does Allen and Darnold make. Miami looks like they're going to be rebuilding. So I'm not expecting Miami to um, do it, but mm, but hey, anything can happen. We've seen crazier things happen in sports. The Jaguars are ready to win now, so that wastes the top ten spot on project quarterback. Matter of fact, the Jet, the only must have is New York Giants and Washington. Murray doesn't fit the Giants, and my hunch is that the Redskins front office feels the NFC East is theirs. What are your thoughts on? For the NFL, hit me up on Twitter at JRed Show. On the college football, Clemson destroys Alabama in the NCAA national championship game um, by a score of 44 16. It is the most lopsided loss in the um, Nick Saban era. And just, just as NFL fans are wondering, is this the end of Tom Brady and the Patriots? College football fans are wondering, is this the end of Alabama? Um, they forced errors. They, um, they, um, the, 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 those bad, those pad passing. Um, and Vicks missed the shoulder completely. Um, 
You completely whiff. Pre-game omens are iffy at best. But the Bravo tried to kill Ergo prior to Longhorn beat down Georgia. I believe all of them close sign for trouble Alabama. Just missed tackles, bad quarterback play. So is um and this um Special teams have, have given a long exactly what they think of the current dynasty. Alabama entered the game 113 as a point percentage, but they could they could, they missed some field extra points. Um, Alabama made several mistakes, shrugged it off. The crucial drive that Alabama's fourth down possession was late through the fourth quarter. Trailing 14-13, caught two touchdown drives. Alabama seemed poised to do anything where they put down a challenge or was crushing with the run game. Second like goal, a fake dive and toss left pitch out of his own tackle formation. They used this formation early in the game. The Titans name is Haley Headtings. If someone that name is using the Carabiner or an Oil Bear American Culture Commission three years, something's gone wrong. So with a bunch of errors made by Alabama, the false start, the subsequent kickoff and out of bounds, and the pass interference call seemed to turn the game on its head. If the tie scored for the one, then Clemson back and has got another stop. In 20, tw it's 2014 Alabama, the tie had the ball momentum with the chance to go up two. Could have been a different game. But if only the line usually works the way, way, the way they change the way to play. When you have to change three empty res possessions, your team's not going to turn the conversions, and three possessions by the team stops to be competitive. It's a bridge so far. And that ignores the fact that Alabama cuts them off the last 10 2 of the game and just finished the first and goal in five. No matter what you change the game, you can't assume the Cubs will just run off the last 10 minutes. At the same time, if critical plays that you convert are all, stay intact too. Julius double move onto the moose in the first quarter. Two fumbles, Alabama covered. He has made athletic like duck by the ref, it's a little pass. It could, it could definitely, I mean, it was just a total domination by Clemson. Alabama gave the game away in the first half. Four huge self inflicted mistakes in those, um, the pick six. So is this the end of Alabama? I'd say no. They, they get, they, I, um, Nick Saban's a great recruiter. I mean, he has made mistakes as coaches. He's not a very good NFL coach. But as a recruiter, he's been great from top notch. Definitely one of the top recruiters of all time. Anyhow, what are your thoughts on on sports? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. I got one more second before I'm gonna go. If, um, if you have a question, hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. And come up next is um, Pressure by Paramore. Keep on to that point seven. The music effect. 